Now that we have a basic understanding of the checklist, let's work our way through the various requirements. Let's start with our varicella requirement. We will look at this item from top to bottom. Under the item's name, we can see the description provided by our school. It is here that you can find specific instructions on how to fill out this item, as well as understand any other requirements that might be required, such as particular documents of proof. It is always important to review this section as some items might need to be filled out in a very specific manner. Below the description, we have a Data Currently on File section. This section represents the compliance information that is already approved for your profile. It is populated after you submit your checklist for approval and your coordinator has approved the data. It is also populated if your coordinator has uploaded information on your behalf. Next is our value section. This is where you will enter the value that the item description has asked for. Every item on your checklist must, must, must have a value completed. You cannot leave the value box blank. In this example, we will need to enter the date that our requirement was met. <clears throat> Below that, we have a comment section. This section is a good place to leave notes for your coordinator or enter further information if the item description calls for it. Lastly, we have the supporting documents section where you will upload a document of proof for this item if it's required. You may use the mass upload function on the left, which we covered in our last video, or if you have a separate document just for this item, you may upload it against this individual item by clicking the green paperclip icon. A pop-up window will appear that lets us choose our document for upload. Once we click the document name, select Open. This will refresh the page and associate the document with the item. We can now see our document directly located under the Supporting Documents area. If your records span multiple documents, you can upload more than one document in this area. Just click the green paperclip icon and repeat the steps we've just covered. If you need to remove a document, click the red trash can icon to the left of the document name. It is also possible to view the contents of the document by clicking on the name of the document in My Clinical Exchange. Now that we've updated the item, navigate to the bottom right corner and click on Save. Please make sure you always save your work before you move to the next item on your checklist in order to prevent the loss of information during this process. You may also click the Next Pending button, which will not only save your edits, but will take you directly to the next pending item on your checklist. The next item on my checklist that I will edit is the MMR. I have already uploaded a document here using the Associate Document button, but I also need to enter the date of completion as well. Now that's done, let's click Next Pending. For the influenza, I have already added a document, but I'm going to leave the value blank for now. We'll see in a moment how MCE flags me for incomplete data. Let's move on to the next item on my checklist, the TB PPD. Once we click on it, we can see much of the same setup as all of the other items. The description, the data currently on file, the prompt for a value and comment, and the fact that I have already uploaded a document of proof. There is one notable difference. Notice that the value box is also labeled renewal date. The system is prompting me to enter a future date of renewal, or the date that we will need to get this item done again. If a past or present date is entered in the value box, My Clinical Exchange will give us an error message. Let's put in a date from a few years ago. Notice how My Clinical Exchange marks the item as expired and gives us an error message indicating the date cannot be less than or equal to today. Let's try that again.
It is very important to pay attention to items that ask for a renewal date, as the TB item is not the only item to do so, and this is often a pain point for many first-time users. Now that I have entered a future date, I am not receiving an error message from my clinical exchange. Let's save and move to the next pending item on our checklist. The next item to take a look at is the background check. Now the background check does not allow me to edit any of the details, which is a setting that some schools choose to utilize. I may view the information that the school coordinator has uploaded on my behalf in the data currently on file section, but I may not edit this information myself. If you feel the information loaded into this area is incorrect, please contact your school coordinator for assistance. I see that our negative drug screen is set up very similarly. The last few items on our checklist, such as the last four of social, can either be edited by me on this page, or I can provide this information in my account settings. Certain items such as the social, the date of birth, your expected graduation date, and photograph that I supply in my account settings will automatically cascade to the checklist for me, so I don't have to enter the information twice. Most checklists are configured in a similar manner with similar functionality. Watch our next video for information on special items that can be marked as declined or not applicable.